Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today is an example of your Stitchcation afghan that we have been working on. This has actually been filmed after we've done all of the uh, motifs and basically what's happening here is that you're going to have four different motifs for each design. So you have one, two, you only see two here and then you can actually kind of see that I've been putting other stuff together. Now the way that I suggested in the ebook that we have written is that because there are six different motifs and 24 um, actually motifs in total, you may want to really play with the idea of the colors being very um, interesting from each other. But sometimes when you start putting it as you go, what happens is you realize you got a, you got a motif that appears to be out of, it doesn't flow. So what I've been recommending in all of the tutorials up until this point is that all the motifs are done all the way to the second last row of each of the designs. And then what I would like you to do is put them down on a table or floor and basically just kind of like a deck of cards, just lay them all out where you think that they should go. And then you can decide whether you want all the borders to be the same colors or you just want to kind of make it all kind of hairy canary. It's up to you, right? So what I would recommend to you is that we have all of the motifs including the actual joiner motif all done up until the second last round and then what you can just do is then lay it on a table and play with the idea on where you think things should go. It's easier to do the final round if you're sitting at a table or in an upright position so that you don't accidentally turn one of these upside down so that you have the wrong side facing up. Now what I've been recommending in the tutorials as well is that what's going to happen is that you're going to put all of your octagons uh, big motifs together first. And so you're going to be leaving these holes that you see here which is a filler motif just like you see here. And what I'd recommend is that once you have it all laid out on your table and you have all your 24 motifs ready to go, you start then working on the actual out, out, outer rings. Now each one of the outer ones that you see here are all the same design. The only difference is that they're attached in different spots within each of the motifs. So you're going to want to keep a track on which motif is which so that you can follow the pattern and make sure it's going to work out for you. And all of the larger motifs attach together in two spots per section. Okay? So then this one here will, will attach up here or vice versa however you want to look at it but it will only ever attach. So these things will always work in a, in a horizontal or a vertical format. So the next square will be straight up, the next square straight up and, and horizontal just like so. So what I recommend is getting all your larger motifs all connected together so that you have the holes left to do the filler connectors just like you see. Now the filler connectors that you see here you're attaching to where the other ones are attaching just like you have here. But you, do you notice that you have to attach right in the center right here? So basically the reason why I had you put all of the larger octagons together first is that this middle one that you see here, this can only be achieved through the filler just like you see here. Okay? So if for example you decide to put this filler in first and then you haven't put this one in, you're going to be having a problem here because how are you going to attach this one um, to this one if this one is already completed. So it's easier to have all of the larger done first, then put in the filler just like so and work your way around so that it's each attached in the middle as well as each point just like so. So you'll never see one of these octagons in the middle section reaching across to the filler. It'll always be the filler reaching out like a spider web. And if that makes sense to you then you're laughing. So once you have all your motifs all assembled like so and you have your connectors all in, basically your afghan is done. You're welcome to do an exterior border if you can figure out what you want to do. That is completely up to you for stitchcation. But I like it just the way that it is. It's kind of just really airy. It's very decorative. Um, something great for my home. I like how there's different interest points of different kinds of motifs to play with. You kind of learned a little bit of stitches along the way. And uh, we have a lot more um, ones that I've been working on as well um, that were in the tutorials that are not part of this example that you see here. And uh, it's been a really kind of a cool idea on just being able to have lots of different ideas as we go. And you can have a lot of fun with this and I really have enjoyed it. 
and I thought it'd be kind of something different. Um, I really like the idea that it wasn't um, a granny square in the sense that you had to sew them together when you when you finished. It was nice to be able to join as you go. Saves lots of times and you know what? It's actually kind of a cool idea and something really kind of decorative for your home. So I guess this is it. Good luck with this and we'll hope to see your finished photos and of course if you have any questions just find us on Facebook and until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as yarnspirations.com and we'll see ya. <laughs>
and pull through two and two and hold. So we don't finish it again. Okay, wrap twice going into the same stitch, pull through two and two and hold. Wrap twice into the same stitch, pull through, pull through two and two and hold. And now you will have four loops on your hook because this is no longer a beginning one and a regular one. The first one is the lead in and then the three are the clusters. Yarn over and pull through all four loops and chain four. One, two, three and four. Let's do one more time. So we're gonna wrap twice into the next stitch, pull through, pull through two and two and hold. Wrap again twice into the stitch, pull through, pull through two and two and hold. And wrap two times and into the same stitch, two and two and hold. You now have four loops, pull through all four, chain four, and back in. You should have a total of eight one of these clusters that look like an eight uh, petal flower going all the way around. So I'm getting my last cluster in. I can actually count eight of them here and I wanna chain four. One, two, three, and four. And I want to join it to the top of the other cluster, the beginning cluster that we did. So it's right over here. Okay, so I wanted to fasten off and I'm only gonna show you how to fasten off and change over once. So here's, here it goes. I'm just going to trim off my yarn and I'm going to yarn over and pull it through the loop to lock it. And I'm going to just weave my tail end into the chain work for about two inches. And by doing this what happens is that it catches it underneath of the next uh, layers of stitches and therefore you'll never see it uh, popping out. And if you do you can always trim it safely and uh, realize it's not a big deal. So I'm going to then once I'm satisfied which I'm going to be after I do this last one is that I wanna come back to the center turn it around to the back, trim off my starting and trim off this one here. And now I'm ready for the next round. So let's begin the next round. I want to go into any of the chain four spaces. It doesn't matter which one you go. Just go into one and just create a slip knot with your first, with your new yarn that you want to change. Remember the colors ideas that I have are just my ideas. You're more than welcome to use your own ideas. And in fact I encourage it. So uh, we want to join on and we want to chain one and then single crochet into this chain four space and we want to single crochet that for a total of six times. So we got one and two three four five and six and you're gonna notice that there's too many stitches to go into that space. That's what kind of makes it really cool. You immediately just jump over, go to the next chain four space and put another six in there. So one, two, three, four, five and six and again immediately just jump over and another six. So continue to do that same pattern all the way around. So now that I'm all the way back around I have my six in the last one. Please just uh, slip stitch to the beginning single crochet that you started with. Please fasten this yarn off and I'll be right back and I'll show you what to do in the next round. So let's begin the next round and we're simply gonna start off with a slip knot. This round is relatively easy as well. We're just gonna create some chain work in order to work on it. So what I recommend is just go into the first one that you want just right above just kind of follow it straight up and we're gonna be playing every other every two stitches anyway. So we're just gonna attach first like so. Okay, uh, chain one and then single crochet into that same space. Like so. So now we're ready to do some chain work. So what we're going to do on this one here is that we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Just come back down, skip over two and go to the third for a single crochet. So the repeat pattern on this one here on this round is chaining five, one, two, three, four, five, coming, skipping over two, coming to the third. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, skipping over two, going to the third. Please do that same thing all the way around. I'm coming up all the way back around and I'm chaining my five and I just want to slip stitch it then to the beginning single crochet that I started with like so and you should have a total count of 16 
of those chain five spaces going all the way around. Make sure you have 16 or things will not work out. I'm gonna keep the color the same but of course you can always change your colors if you wish. To begin the next round I wanna start off and we're going to slip stitch into the next chain uh, five space. Just slip stitch to begin and I want to chain three which counts as a double crochet. So one, two, three and then double crochet two more times into the same space. So each one of these chain five or chain five spaces will only have three double crochets in them and then what we're going to do after you get that done is that there will be an actual um, chain one right after that. So there's a chain one that separates each one of these. So we'll chain one and then coming into the next space it's gonna be three double crochets into that same space. So please continue to do that. So each one of the spaces will have three double crochets followed by a chain one all the way around and then I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna fasten this yarn off and go for something else after that. So it's a nice easy round for you to do. We'll see you in just a second. Once you're all the way back around you'll have your uh, three double crochets in followed by a chain one and just uh, slip stitch it to the top of the beginning chain three that you started with and then fasten that off and then we're ready for the next color. So let's start my next color. This time it's gonna be lavender. Uh, this one is a very easy round. We just wanna come into any one of the chain one spaces. It doesn't matter which one you grab as long as it's just one of them and just attach your yarn as normal. Okay and you're going to chain one and then single crochet back into that same one like so, like that. Okay, so let's get ready. We're going to chain seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and into the next chain one space, just single crochet. That's all this round is. So seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, in next chain three space. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, chain one space. Please do that all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around and making sure I get my seven in again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Please uh, just join it to the beginning single crochet that we started with. So I'm going to keep this color the same uh, for my next round to thicken up this whole chain work and that's coming up next. To begin the next one I'm just going to simply just uh, single crochet right into the next one and that counts as one and I only want to do five singles into each. So two, three, four and five and all, honestly once you get the five done go into the next one and do another five into the next chain space. So one, two, three, four and five and it makes these, uh, this area, see how it kind of just comes down like this? It's kind of neat. So because there's not enough stitches to make that um, really ball out it causes it to jump up like that. So when you see it on the original you can see that there's a lot of gapping space because of it and it's a really kind of a cool effect. So remember each one of these is five single crochets, three, four and five and then just jump over. And the next round is our final round and I'll show you how to do that in a bit but let's finish this round first. Once you're all the way back around just slip stitch to the beginning single crochet that you started with and fasten that off and let's get ready for the final round and let's review that in just a moment. We're now ready for the final round of this motif but I rock recommend to you that you get all of the motifs done to the second last round before completing any of the final rounds. The final rounds have to attach to each other, each other so if you do the final rounds for each one of these and not attach them then you're gonna have to sew everything together and nobody likes sewing. So what we want to do is that this is an example of what one looks like without attaching to anything. So it's kind of makes for a cool motif or uh, doily but we want to attach as we go and where they attach is that these are gonna be attaching two other octagons and let me just pull out another example that we have here. Okay so you can see that they can see that they are attaching to each other just like you see here and then there's a small connector that goes in the middle of where these are going and the connectors are waiting to the last minute in order to get in there. But the final ones for the big ones is that you have to attach them all at this, at this, at the time of actually doing them. So the small connectors connect to everything but the, the, the big ones only attach to the neighbors that they're attached to. So I'm gonna start you off and show you how to do one of these because not all of the sides, especially on the, the exterior 
um, sections of the afghan they actually are not attached to a neighbor because they, they're the outside edges. So you do need to know how to do this but then I'm gonna show you how to attach them without sewing either or as well. So let's get started in that next. So let's begin we're gonna create a slip knot and we're gonna start off with making the first corner. And I want you to just look for it and just look for the very first one of the, of the grouping of five. Okay look for the five so it doesn't matter which one could be any one of them. It's up to you. So we're just gonna go into the one and just attach. And each one of the exterior of the large motifs are the same. So now we're gonna change our chain five. So that was one, two, three, four, five. This is a treble plus a chain one. That's what it counts as. So we're gonna treble again into the same stitch. Followed by a chain one and then treble one more time. So each one of the corners has a total of three trebles with chaining ones that separate them. So now we're going to begin along and do a flat edge. So the flat edging is all the same for all of the stitchcation motifs uh, for the large ones and the first two are a double crochet each. The next one is a half double crochet. And then the next three are three single crochets and one into each. And now we're gonna get bigger again. So we're going to uh, start it with a half double. The next two are going to be double crochets. And now we're ready for another corner which is the same spot of where we started over here. So we start off with the treble first followed by a chain one and then go for another treble into the same st stitch which is the middle one and uh, what we want to do at this point is that we want to grab our, our joining one. So I'm just gonna use this one here and what I want, actually I'm gonna use the other one here. So I'm just gonna look for where they need to join to a neighbor and I wanna make sure the right side is up first before I go anywhere. I would recommend doing this on a table and so you want to make sure everything is gonna balance. So I want to attach this one to, to here and to here at the same time and it's gonna leave a hole right in the middle which is your small connector that you can see up over here. So let's uh, begin to do that. So I'll, let me show you how to do that. So what I'm gonna do is take out my hook which fell out on its own but I'm gonna position everything back into my hand and pinch this loop. And I'm going to look for where this needs to join in order to uh, make it work. So what I'm going to do at this point is that I have to start off and I look for the adjacent one and I look for the middle one of the, th of the three trebles. Okay so this is the three trebles going down in and I grab that loop that I had, pull it through, chain one to lock it and then I treble it once again into the same one that I've been working with. And now that just permanently attached it to that particular motif. Now let's work along the side as normal. So it's going to be two doubles in a row. The next one is gonna be a half double the next three are singles. The next one we're gonna get bigger is gonna be a half double. The next two are doubles. So this is the same thing that we've been doing for all of the motifs and now this time th this is another corner. So we're going to treble to start into the next stitch followed by a chain one and treble again. That is the middle one of the three. So once you have that done, pinch it, let it go. Go back down to your motif and get the next one that's available to you. Straight down into the same stitch but on the other motif pulling it through. Chain one to lock and then treble back into the same stitch to lock that one. So now this one is permanently locked to this one. So now what's happening on this one here, I'm just gonna pull this out a little bit, is that when I look at it here you can see it's locking into this one up here but now when I come around here I want to lock it to this one as well and I'm going to do that in just a second. So let me just come along and I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to go two, two doubles in a row. Okay, half double because I'm working along the flat edge. Three singles. 
okay, half doubles or just one half double, two double crochet in a, uh, one in a row or there in a row and now here's the next corner. So we start off with the treble, okay, chain one and treble into the same one again. This is the middle one. So now I wanna turn this and I wanna secure this one into position to where it needs to go. Okay, so I look for the middle one of this other one that's in behind, coming straight down on the right side, pull the loop through, okay, and then I just lock it by chaining one and treble back in. And basically you just keep going all the way around in the same fashion. Now because each one of these attach in two spaces per side, that means I've only attached it one time so far and I gotta attach it once again to this top one in order to make it work. So let me do that. So do you remember what the stitches are? It's two doubles, half, and three singles, one, two, and three. Okay, a half as we get bigger again, two doubles. See the attaching process is not a big deal. Okay, and then the trebles, we're gonna start off with the first one. So one corner, chain one, the next treble. This is the middle one of that same corner. Pinch it, coming down, just looking across to where it's gonna attach next. And it's the middle treble, coming straight down from the right side. Pull through, chain one to lock. Okay, and then treble back again into that same stitch. So then basically that's been attached now when I pull it up. I can see that this one has been attached now in two spots. Just like there. And that's all I can attach because I don't have any more motifs to attach to. But uh, once you start attaching them together like that, you just, uh, it becomes like a, a brick wall. You just keep um, attaching, attaching, attaching until your afghan is completely done. So continue to go all the way around in the same fashion. If you have nothing more to attach to, you just continue to go around as normal. I'm just like I'm kind of showing you and you can also read that in the instructions as well. So as you're coming back up all the way around, you're just gonna finish it off as normal. Come to the fourth stitch or the fourth chain up. Don't go to the fifth like you started with because then it won't keep that gapping consistent at the end. So just finish that off and again, I'd recommend that getting all of your motifs done before doing the final uh, border uh, because you have to attach them to your neighbors and if you're working with six different motifs, you may change your mind on where they, they should go, especially if you've been having fun playing with the colors like I have. Until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarn Inspirations as well as thecrochetcrowd.com. Stay tuned for more free patterns and ideas. We'll see you. Bye-bye now. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to focus on this Lennox Afghan motif and this is motif B and this again is a very simple one here. There's lots of lace work, very easy to maintain and what I've done as well is that I've kind of kept the colors consistent but of course the color options are completely up to you. Today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to do this completely but at the end of the tutorial um, we're going to want to put your Afghan together just like so. What I recommend that I've been saying in all of them is get all of the ones done from the sec from the the second last round and then before you're doing the attaching make sure that you have all of the kind of set up the way that you want to. There are six different large motifs and because there's um, six different ones you may want to strategically place them and so it's easier to lay them down and then do the final round. The final round for each one of these are identical to each other so that they perfectly attach to each other. But the question is where exactly do you want them on the afghan? So today's tutorial I'm gonna teach you uh, how to do this one. This one again is really really quick. So let's begin next. So let's begin and we're doing a magic ring that is explained in the tutorial um, sample in the actual pattern itself. And then basically we want to start off with the straggler coming down in front of your hand. Put two fingers out and put it up over your hand like so. So it becomes on an angle right here. Insert your hook underneath the first one, grab that second one and then just get that second one again just toward the back of your hand and pull it through to lock that ring into position. 
Okay, you can now let it go and then basically you just have to position this ring just like so. Whenever you're crocheting in this ring you gotta make sure you get both strings underneath the stitches so that you can pull it nice and tight. Let's begin our first round. Round number one is really easy. We're just gonna start off by chaining four. One, two, three, and four. That counts as a double crochet plus a chain one. So in the rules of uh, crochet whenever you chain like that, chain three counts as a double crochet. So by chaining four you have a double crochet plus chain one. We want to double crochet into the center of the ring and then each time you double crochet just chain one afterward and then double crochet again into the ring and then chain one double crochet into the ring and you wanna do a total so that you have eight um, of these spokes of these posts going all the way around. It's very important that you keep uh, stitch counts with these uh, particular motifs because they are attaching to each other you don't wanna lose count. Okay, so we've got one, two, I'm counting the posts. So one, two, three, four, five, six and chain one. I'm going for seven, chain one, double crochet back into that again chain one and I now I have eight. I know I do but I'm gonna count anyway. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight and now I'm ready to join it to the beginning of the top of the third stitch up. So we chain four only go to the third one for a slip stitch and before you go anything further grab that straggler that's in behind and pull it and it will make that center nice and tight. Like so. I'm only gonna show you one time on how to fasten off throughout this whole tutorial. Here it is. I'm just gonna grab the scissors, cut it, yarn over, pull the string through and then just weave it in to the stitch work that you can find. Your next round it's going to start trapping this straggler into position so that it should never fall out on you afterwards. So just go around maybe about an inch or two, actually about two or three inches I should say. An inch is not enough. So once you have that done just let's cut off these strings so they're out of their way for tutorial purposes and I would do it if I were you too and just trim and trim and you're now ready for round number two. Let's begin our next round and we're gonna start off with a slip knot. I'm using lavender this time around and what we want to do is create V stitches that are in between all of these chain one spaces. So right into, so just go into any one, it doesn't matter, it's all equal. Go in right to a space, fasten on. Just attaching and pulling things through. I like to do it this way, it likes to secure it and I need to chain five. So let's begin. So one and two, three, four and five. So that counted as a double crochet plus chain two and then we double crochet back into the same space. Okay and now let's move along. So we're gonna go to the next chain one space, double crochet first and then chain two, one and two and then double crochet again into that same space. We wanna do that all the way around into the same thing. So just go to the next chain one space. So double crochet, chain one and then double crochet. And please do that all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around. I'm gonna just finish off my last V stitch in here and I wanna make sure there's still eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight and then we just wanna slip stitch to the third chain up. So one, two, three up to the third. So we chained five originally to start because that counts as a double crochet plus chaining of two. So if you go all the way to the top of the five you're gonna lose your last one. Please just fasten this off and I'll see you back in a sec. We'll start the next part. Let's begin our next round. We're just simply gonna start off with another slip knot and we want to join it in between the V stitch. So just right into the chain th uh, two spaces just like you see. Okay, so right in between the V stitch and join. We're then going to chain one and then single crochet into that same space like so. Okay, now what we have to do is chain nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine and coming into the next middle of the V which is right here just single crochet. That's all we gotta do with this round. So again nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine coming to the next middle of the V and single crochet. Please do that. You should end up with a total of eight of these loops by the end of this round. So I'm just finishing up my last nine and I wanna slip stitch to the beginning single crochet that we started with. 
So you should have a total of eight of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And now we're ready for the next round. And I'm gonna keep the color the same. It's up to you if you wanna change it. To begin the next round, we need to slip stitch two chain spaces over on this chain nine. So just reaching over, just get and slip over by two. One, and go to the next one for two. And now we're ready to begin the next round. So we can't start off right in the center. It's kind of like the other motifs where you wanna keep continue to make it look consistent. So what we want to do then is chaining of, of three. One, two, three. That counts as a double crochet. And I want you to double crochet four more times in this same chain nine space. So if the chaining of three counted as one double crochet and I'm, and I'm double crocheting four more, that means that there's a total of five within this. So once I have that done, what do I do next? Well, what I have to do is that you have to chain two after you get your five, a group of five done and then just reach over for the next chain a nine and just immediately just start double crocheting five more times. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then once you have that done, chain two, one and two, reach over to the next chain nine space and another five. Please do that, same thing all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around. I got my group of five in here. I still have to chain two and then slip stitch it to the top of the chain three that we started with. And please fasten that off. You should have eight groups of five going all the way around at this point. Okay, in the next round what we're going to do is that we're going to play within the middle one of the group of five and then also the chain two space. So let's grab on our next yarn here and create a slip knot. And we're gonna do two rounds of this green. Again, the color choices are up to you. So start off in a chain two space. Doesn't matter which one, just choose one and then just join it. And then just chain one. Okay, and then single crochet into the same stitch or same uh, gapping space, chain two space. Now what we're going to do is chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And we're gonna go to the middle one of the group of five. It says to skip over two. Well, that's the middle one. So here we go. So single crochet into the middle one and then chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. This time it's into the chain two gap. Next one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Middle one of the five for a single crochet. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. And it's a chain two space. So continue to do that same thing all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way around. I still have to do a chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then I'm just going to join it to the beginning single crochet as a, for a slip stitch. Now what I wanna do is I wanna keep this color the same uh, for the next round. Again, the color choices are up to you and I'm going to start off with using the same color next. So let's begin the next round. I want to chain one first and then five single crochets into this first chain space. So one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, and all you're just gonna do is in the next chain space put another five. So you don't, you don't do anything with this middle section in the middle. Okay, there's five and then the next one is another five. So continue to do that same thing all the way around. I'm just putting a five and that's just a fiber. So uh, just continue to do that and I'll see you back in just a moment. So five single crochets into each one of these chain spaces. Once your five are done in the last one, you're just gonna slip stitch to the beginning one. Remember that we chained one to start with, so make sure you are slip stitching to the very beginning single crochet and not just to the chain one. And then fasten that off and we're ready for the final round and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a sec. So here's the final round just like so and the final round has this beautiful edging. Now all of the motifs on the ones on the outside of the afghan, they don't attach to anything but the ones on the inside do. And so they, the motifs actually kind of sit like this. So you have like these two would be exposed and these two would be attached to a neighbor. So what I recommend is that you do all of your motifs, all of the large ones, all of them, all six different styles, all the way to the second last line and then wait for it. And then what I would do is put these on a table and put them down be, and what I've done is that all of the uh, motifs have the same ending. 
Okay, so all of the stitching uh, it works out. Now the only difference is, is that the stitch counts are where they're going in because each of the second last round is different from each other from all six different styles is that it's the only placement is the, is, is the difference. So what we want to do with this one is that we wanna make sure that we have motifs ready to go to be attached just like this. Okay, so the large motifs they will attach to each of the large motifs and the mini connectors then attach in the middle and you leave the mini connectors until the very end uh, when you're going to do stuff like that. So today I'm going to show you how to do it so that you can do a nice one like so and then I'm gonna work it around and then I'm gonna start attaching it to a neighbor in order to make it work out as well. So let's begin to get ready. Now I noticed on this one here, I'm reading the instructions. This is amazing what you can read even though you do two examples. You still follow this thing and you still write a book. <laughs> and what I realized here is that this where these are joining here, in actual fact it should have been in the middle of a grouping of five. But you know what? I don't really care. It looks actually pretty decent on its own. So you know what? Sometimes you just gotta use your own creativity when it comes to do it. For tutorial reasons I'm gonna put it in the right spot. So all it just means is that instead of it being the middle right in between one of these, it's just gonna be moved over just slightly and really it doesn't make that much of a difference. So let's uh, begin to do the next part. So let's begin. We're going to create a slip knot to start with. And the outsides are identical so if this is not your first education uh, one this um, you will be familiar with what I'm about to do. So right in the, the five double crochets that you have or five single crochets right in the middle um, that you have in a section go for the middle one. Okay and I want you then to chain five. Okay so we're just gonna attach and the chaining of five counts as a treble plus one chain. So let's just start chaining up five. So one and two, three, four and five. So that's a treble plus one and I want to uh, come into the same spot with the treble so I wrap twice into the same stitch and then chain one and then wrap twice and put in another treble. So there's always in these corners there's always three trebles with a chain space between each. So now we're gonna move th uh, through the stitch work that you see and we're gonna get smaller. So the next two are going to be double crochets each. So one and two and then the next one is going to be half double. Okay and so then what we have is that the next um, two are going to be uh, double crochet And this takes you back to the middle section of the grouping of five and we're going to do another corner. So we're gonna uh, wrap again for uh, twice for a treble, chain one, do another treble and this time I'm going to attach it to a neighbor. Okay so I'm gonna grab my example back up that I have over here making sure the right sides are facing up and if you in this case right here I can only attach it to one of them because in order to attach it to there has to be one down over into this section. So I'm only gonna attach to one at this spot. So what I want to do at this point is that I want to pull my hook out, pinch the loop so it doesn't fall, go anywhere and go to the adjacent one that is ready for you. Okay so we just want to go to the adjacent one right there coming straight down into the same double or tre uh, treble crochet that exists on that one. Pull the loop through and if you've done the other videos you know exactly what I'm talking about at this point and then chain one to lock it and then treble back into the same spot. Okay so let's work along the another edge and so then I'll show you how to attach the second one. So the next two are one doubles each, one double crochet each. Okay, the next one is a half double. Okay, the next three are singles. Single crochet, one, two and three. Okay, the next one is a half double. Okay, and the next two are double crochets each. Bringing you to the next middle of the next grouping of five. So we start off with the treble first followed by a chain one and do this next treble which is the middle one of the three. Okay, pinch, go back to your one that you've already joined to and come to the next one available to you right into the center. Coming straight down on the front, on the right side pulling the loop through. Lock it by chaining one 
and then treble back in to the same spot. So then you just continue to round as normal. There's nothing more to attach to on this particular one. And so then the next ones are, are two doubles in a row. Okay, the next one is a half double. The next three are singles. So we've designed each one of the edging to be the same so that you didn't have to really burn any brain cells. So okay, so the next one is a half double. The next two are doubles which then takes you to the middle section of the next grouping of five. And so you still do your corners as normal. That was not one, one of them. We wanna do a treble as corner, as a corner. Followed by a chain one, another treble into the same stitch chain one and then a final treble. So basically this is how you would do it if you were not attaching it so that you have the consistency and then basically you can see that I've just attached to the neighbor like so. So please go all the way around and finish that off and I'll see you back and we'll just review our work one more time and then I'll let you go for today. So let's begin the final round. We're gonna start off with a slip knot and what I want you to do then is grab into the middle one of the group of five. Okay just like so. So it doesn't matter which one as long as it's the middle and insert and attach. And we're going to start off by doing one of the corners first. And we're gonna be chaining a five. So one and two, three, four and five. And then coming back into that same stitch we want to treble. So wrap twice to do your trebles and treble back in. And then chain one and then treble again. So the chaining of five that we started with is actually one treble and a chaining of one. So let's uh, begin. We're going to start making our way to get more narrow as we do a flat edge of your octagon and the next two are going to be uh, double crochets each. So one and two and then the next one is going to be half double crochet. So we're gonna get smaller and then the next three are one single crochet each. So one, two and three and we're gonna get bigger again. So it's gonna be a half doubles to get bigger. And the next two are going to be one doubles each, one double crochet each. Like so. Okay, and the next one is the middle one of a group of five and it is another corner. So we're gonna start off by doing a, uh, a treble, chaining a one and another treble and this is the center one of your corner. But what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna show you how to join. So we want to grab up to the next one that is ready to go and basically we can only attach where they're available to us. So in this case I only have one here because when I hold it up right there's nothing on top of it over here in order to attach to. So I'm only gonna attach it in two spots. To do the attaching all I'm just gonna do is I'm just going to reposition this in my hands and I'm going to pinch and I'm going to go to the next one that's available to me and go to the middle one of the treble Okay, and just from the straight or from the right side down into the top of the treble and then pull through, chain one to lock it and then do the final treble of this corner that we were working on to secure it. So basically one of the corners is now permanently attached to the other one. So let's uh, go along the flat edge. So then it's gonna be two doubles in a row. We're gonna get smaller by doing another half double, just one. And then the next three are single crochets each. One, two and three. And then we're gonna get bigger again. So half double, two doubles in a row. So one into each. And now we're ready for another corner. So to start it we're gonna start with a treble. Chain one, okay, treble again. And now this is the middle one of the corner. Pinch it, come back down to the same one that you're joining to and go to the next point over to the top of the next treble, to the middle treble, pull through, chain one to lock it and then treble again into where we were. And so that officially has those attached to the neighbor. So you're just gonna continue to go all the way around as normal because there's nothing more to attach to and uh, basically it's really quite easy. So it's gonna be a double crochet into the next two followed by a half into the next. The next three are singles. One, two, three. 
the next one is a half as we get bigger again. The next two are doubles and we're back into the middle section of another group of five. This is a corner so if there's something to attach to it's the middle one so it's a treble, chain one, treble and I attach it if there's something there for you to attach. If not just chain one, treble back in and continue that same thing going all the way around. Please finish that uh, one off and uh, you can check your work and I'll be right back. So when you're coming all the way back around you're just gonna be finishing it off as you normally would. So this will be three singles in a row. So you're still following the pattern. Next one is a half double as we get bigger again and that means that the final two that we ended up with shall be one double crochet into each. Like so and then what you have to just do then is just uh, fasten it off to the third or to the fourth one up. Remember we chained off five then when we did that so we got have to go to the fourth uh, because if you go to the five then it's at the top and you miss that whole spacing that you need for the corner. So please fasten that off and basically you are done for today. You can move on to the next uh, motif if you're working on stitchcation and of course you know you can always do a whole afghan just with this one design as well. You can change it a gazillion times I'm sure and it's still a lot of fun. Till next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarn Inspirations as well as the Crochet Crowd .com. We'll see you. Bye bye. In today's tutorial we're going to explore stitchcation with another motif example and this is from the Lennox throw and this is a great little motif that you can use in order to really accent your pieces. So let's begin to learn how to do this next. So let's begin. We're gonna start off with a magic circle, a size six millimeter size J crochet hook and this is Bernat's super value that we're working with today. So to do a magic circle we're just gonna put the yarn in front of your uh, palm of your hand just like this. Just use two fingers and just wrap and then coming up and over on a diagonal like so. Insert your hook underneath your fingers right into the gapping spaces where you can get them and just reach under and grab this, this string that's crossing over diagonally and then what you have to just do is just grab that yarn again. It's right over here. Just insert underneath. Use your fingers to help you and just pull through that loop and that will lock this ring into position. And if you're tight with the tension like I am <laughs> it's a little harder but it's very doable and this makes a magic circle and what you want to do is every time you're playing in the circle you want to make sure that the stitches go over top of the two strings so you can just pull the string and everything will come nicely together. So let's begin our next part. So let's begin our next round. We are going to start off by chaining a four. So one, two, three and four and we wanna put 15 trebles into the center ring. We make, make sure that you do go over top both of these strings. So to do a treble is just wrap and wrap and into the center of the ring. Pull through two, two and two. We're gonna be using the color green for two rounds. So this is one round of the two and uh, this is a really kind of a neat concept. So just continue to treble for 15 times. Now remember the first one of chaining three counts as a treble so that you will have a total of 16. It's important with any of these motifs for stitchcation that all of your counts are accurate as you go around because they need to attach to each other in the right spots. So okay so I got one, two and I'm counting the first chain. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is seven, this is eight, this is nine, this is ten, it's eleven, twelve, okay thirteen, fourteen, 15 and 16. So what I want to do is I want to double check before I do anything further. I'm known to lose count or forget numbers. So 1, 2 and I need to count 16. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. Once I'm satisfied I'm just going to join it to the top of the beginning chain 4 and just as a slip stitch and pull through and through. So now that I've done that I want to take this middle string and just pull it 
tight. Okay, just pull it firmly. Don't over tighten it and it brings everything together just like this. So what I want to do is that I want to carry on to the next one using the same color. Of course the color changes are up to you. You can change them at any time and not follow my instructions for that. So let's begin. We're simply just going to chain one and then single crochet into the same spot as to join. And then what we're going to do is that we're going to chain 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay? And then coming into the next one that you have available to you. Okay? The next stitch is a single crochet. So let's begin again. So you're going to single crochet into the next one. Okay? And then chain 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Coming into the next one for a single crochet and then single crochet into the next one. Continue to do that all the way around. You will should end up with a total of eight of these large loops by the time you're done. When you get all the way back around uh, we just have to make sure we get into our final slips that are single crochet and then we're just gonna slip stitch to the beginning single crochet that we started with to bring it all together just like this. I'm going to show you only one time on how to fasten off with this uh, project and all of the stitch cation videos are like that. I only show it once and so I just trim it and pull through and what I want to do is that I want to feed this yarn through the chain work that we're gonna go. Now in the next part of this uh, one is that we're going to be going right over top of these chains. So I just put about two inches maybe three just kind of putting it in there so it gets really stuck underneath everything so that you don't see it popping through. Once you're satisfied just simply trim your yarn and trim that beginning one that you, that you pulled shut and then you're ready for the next part. To begin the next round we wanna start off with a slip knot. This is how I'm joining it. I'm doing it slightly different from the pattern just so that you're aware. I wanna pick this up and I wanna start off in a chain 11 space anywhere. But start off right in the beginning here because you're gonna be going all the way across just like this. So we're just gonna just join it. So just going in and putting it in as a join and this is how I kinda join my stuff. And I simply wanna chain one and I wanna single crochet five times into this same space. So one, two, three, four, and five. And uh, what I want to do at this point then is I want to chain three. So one, two, three, coming into the same space for another five. So one, two, three, four, and five. Now because you've gone around the chain like so, these slide anywhere. So in order to stabilize the slide they recommend just right in between the two single crochets right here just have a slip stitch. And what that will do is it will force it to always kind of pull down toward the center. So what you've done here is that the top here the chaining of three is the join for the next one. Okay? And then because you've slip stitched here is that it will always make sure that it pulls it straight down so it doesn't get just it doesn't ever get uh, back up. So you're just gonna start off in the next chain 11 space another five single or uh, single crochets. So that was one, two, three, four, and five. And then I want you to chain three. So one, two, three, and then five back in to the same space. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then slip stitch in between the two single crochets down here to pull it down. So you'll notice it kind of like buckled that one there. No big deal. Just it just has to be stretched. And things just moved around and when you get the next round anyway it's gonna pull everything to be consistent. So okay so five single crochets, chain three, five single crochets and then a slip stitch in between. Please do that all the way around. When you get all the way back around just simply slip stitch into where you are uh, in between just like you had been but you're not quite done yet. You need to stabilize it by slip stitching it to the first single crochet as well. So that will pull everything nicely together. Please fasten that off and we're gonna get our next color ready for the next two rounds. Okay the next round is really easy to start off with a slip knot 
and it's so easy it's not even funny. So what I want you to do is that you will notice that it probably doesn't look completely stabilized and whatever. I'm not even worrying about that at this point. These rounds are gonna pull itself together and make it look really cool. So you just have to pay uh, just be patient. So you have a chain three space that are right in the top of each one of the petals and so that's where we're gonna play next. So we're just gonna go right into a chain three space and let's fasten on our yarn and I'm going to chain one and then single crochet into the same space. Okay, so what we want to do is that we want to go all the way around and this time we want to chain nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine and then just come to the next chain three space that's in the next petal and just stabilize it with a single crochet. So you're gonna notice in the original is that it appears that there's two rounds which it is. This is what we're doing right now that it's attaching it to the petal and then we're gonna come back and then just thicken up this chain with another round. So if you're thinking something's off, it's not off. It's just, it's two rounds. So again nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine and then coming back into the next petal top uh, chain three gap space okay single crochet. Please do that all the way around and you'll see that it's starting to come together. When you get all the way back around you have your chain nine just simply just attach it or with the single uh, slip stitch to the first single crochet. And please leave on this color. We're going to go out one more time to go all the way around. If you change your color right now you'll end up with these uh, red strings just popping out and then a different color here. That's kind of a cool effect too. So you get to play with your own ideas and what you think is good for you. Let's begin our next round. To begin the next round all you just need to do is just single crochet around this chain and you want to put 10 single crochets around this chain. See this uh, straggler that I have? I'm just gonna trap it underneath and get it stuck into there so it's really hidden. So we have one and just go around the chain two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten and then what you have to do is, do is skip over this next single crochet and just go right into the next chain space and you wanna put another ten in there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine and ten. And again skip over the next single crochet and another 10 into there. So continue to do that same thing all the way around. So when I'm coming up all the way back around I have my 10 in. I just simply just join it to the beginning single crochet with a slip stitch and then fasten this off and the final round is next and we'll explain a little bit more about that in a sec. So as I've explained in the Stitchcation book I want you to do all of the rounds except for the final round for all of the motifs before moving on to the connecting process. The final round we need to connect with the neighbor but because there's six different types of motifs you know you, where they go in the motif may be up to something that you want to be completely random. So what I would recommend is that doing all of them and stop right here and then come back to this video when you're ready to do all the connecting. I'm obviously gonna carry on in this video on showing you how to connect. So this is what it would look like if you were not to connect. Now you will notice that the outside of the afghan there's nothing connecting to it. So you will have sides that will ha are just perfect like this. And then you're gonna have other ones where I already have them starting to attach to each other. And when they attach to a neighbor for example, they always attach straight across from each other. So just straight across and you will end up with a small gap that's right in here and there's a small connector motif that's in that particular space. So whenever you're joining these motifs they will always be up vertically from each other okay and horizontally straight across. So there's gonna be another one right up here going straight across. So it'll attach here as well as to this one right here when we're ready to go. And I'm going to show you how to do that particular one right now and uh, this is part of that. So let's uh, begin and I'm gonna put this aside and get this ready for the join. So let's begin with the slip knot to be to start and what I want to do is that I want to just pull apart this work. So just kind of pull and do you see how a gap is just showing up right here? It shows up in each one of these in between where these are joining. I want you to go into that gapping space It's uh, to begin. And I want you to insert your hook and attach your yarn on. 
and I want you to be uh, start to chain five. Okay, so let's do a chain five. This counts as a treble plus one chain. One, two, three, four, and five. And then I want you to treble back into the same space. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to show you how to do a corner without attaching which is uh, coming up shortly. And then once you have this treble done, chain one. And then what I'm going to show you is how to do the attaching. Okay. So basically every corner exists of three trebles with a chain one in between here and here. So we're going to get smaller so we're gonna work our way across the chain, uh, the single crochets. The next two are going to be a, a double each, a double crochet. The next one will be a half double crochet. And then the next one, our next three will be single crochet. So it'll be three of them. One, two, and three. And then we just want to get bigger again. So the next one will be a half double. The next two will be two double crochet, uh, a double crochet each. And this will take you right back to where the next gapping space is. That's right here. So this time I'm going to show you how to do the corner. So we're gonna wrap and wrap and we're going to treble into that space. Okay, chain one and treble it once again. And this is the middle one of the three trebles. So if I want to attach it to a neighbor without sewing, I'm just gonna take the loop out or take the hook out, expose the loop and I wanna come into the, to the right side looking straight down and straight down on this one as well to the right side and I wanna attach it to the appropriate one. So lay it down on a table and I want to attach to these two right here. So I have to make sure that I'm getting to the first one. If I attach this one here it's gonna run into here. So I have to make sure I'm watching where it goes. So I'm just going to look for the treble, the middle one of the adjacent one and come straight down into the stitch. Grab the loop from what I was working on. Just like this. And then chain one to lock it. Okay and then treble back again into that same space. So now I don't have to sew anything. I just have to crochet as I go. So let's move across this line. So we're, we're going to come down and the next two will be a uh, double crochet each. So it's just like what you've already done. The next one's a half double. And the next three are, are singles. So one. We purposely designed this so each one of the rotations on the final are all the same. So that it's easy to remember. Okay the next one is a half double as we're gonna get bigger again. And the next two are doubles each and then you're back into the gap space for the next one. Okay, so treble into the gap space for the first one, chain one, treble back into the gap space. For the second one, this is the middle one, take the hook out, get to the next one that's available to you. Okay, straight in, it's the middle one of the three, pull the loop through. Okay, and then lock it with the chain one and then treble back in. So you wanna do that every time you need to lock it to your neighbor. So you're gonna continue to move around. So what's gonna happen on this next one here is that we are going to attach it to the other one right here and create this whole middle gapping space next. So before we can do that we just have to continue the same pattern. So we're gonna double for two in a row. Okay, we're going to half the next one. The next three are singles. Okay, the next one's a half. The next two are doubles. Okay, back into the next chain space just like you see and just treble. For the first one, chain one. Treble for the second one which is the middle one. And then basically at this point we want to attach it again. So if you're running into another one, so we're gonna attach again. Okay, so you see what's going on. Okay, so we're gonna attach it to this neighbor over here and just coming down straight on the middle one of the, the trebles. I would recommend you do this on a table. It's just easier to see where they are. It's easy to accidentally get the wrong one. Lock it with the one chain, chain one and then treble back into the same one. Move along again across and then the next corner that you run into 
you'll attach it once again just like this straight across. So continue to do that and I'll meet you back here in just a moment. When you get all the way back around you're just gonna finish the pattern off as normal. You're gonna finish off with two double crochets and then just join it to the fourth one up. Don't join to the fifth and then just fasten that off as normal. So now what you have when you've attached them here is that you can see that we have gone all the way around and we are starting to attach and we're left with a hole in the middle. So to fill that hole in we need to do a connector. So that's it for today. The motif is now done, attached and ready to go and you can continue to assemble your afghan as you go and you can play around with a lot of the different motifs in order to make it really quite unique. Till next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarn Inspirations as well as the Crochet Crowd. Have a fabulous day and we'll see you real soon. Bye bye. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're working on stitchcation and this is one of the motifs that we're going to be doing. For stitchcation you have to do four of each of the motifs that we have and then we have a connecting motif that then fills it in. We have more information available on our website. Just see the link in the more information of this video and you can find out to get the written instructions for all of the motifs as well as instructions for how to put everything together. So let's begin to work on this motif. You should know that the final round you should wait until all of the motifs for the entire afghan are complete before doing it. This allows you to be able to put down your motifs and arrange them and then come back and do the final border. You're gonna wanna make sure that you make a note on what this motif is so that you can follow the instructions afterward because the final rounds of all the motifs though they are done the same as far as all the stitch work they go into different spots on the round below. So let's uh, begin. You're going to need a size uh, J a six millimeter crochet hook today and we're gonna be using Bernat Super Value Yarn throughout today's tutorial. For all of the stitchcation motifs we're going to be doing a magic ring. So we're just gonna put it in front of your hand just like so and so that the tail is in the front and you're going to just use two fingers and wrap the yarn around your two fingers and then have them cross over top just like this. You're then going to insert your hook underneath the, the one string. Okay, so the one string is kind of awkward. So under the one string, grab the yarn, pull through and then grab the yarn that is leading to the yarn ball and pull through that loop to secure. And what we're going to be doing is then we're gonna be using this center as the start of your particular uh, motif. Remember that we do have other tutorials on how to do magic rings of all different sizes available on the crochetcrowd.com. Without pulling the center ring tight, I want you to chain up three. One, two, Three, and as per the instructions this counts as a double crochet one of them. We want to double crochet 15 more times into the center of this ring. Whenever you're doing this ring you want to make sure that the second string always stays inside of the stitch. So just wrap your hook, go into the center and then just double crochet and do that for 15 times. So with that one of chaining of three you should total uh, end up with a total of 16. So let's count together. So I've got two, three, four and five, six, six and seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and 12, and 13, 14, and 15. So with that chaining of three that you started with you should have a total of 16 altogether. So let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So before pulling that center tight just go to the top of the beginning, chain three and do a slip stitch like so and now take the center and pull it firm. Okay, don't go crazy with it. Just pull it nice and tight and then I want you to fasten off. So I'm gonna show you how to fasten off. So we're just gonna cut our yarn. Please do this every time I'm asking you to uh, change colors within this project and just pull it through and then just use this string and just weave it in and out of the stitches just like you see. So just in and out and the next round what we're gonna do is that when we go into this stitch we're gonna trap that permanently into position 
and just for tutorial reasons and I would do it also with myself this extra string at the bottom that you just pulled tight trim it get rid of it now and then it will be out of your way and you don't have to worry about it later. Just like so. So let's uh, begin to go on to the next round. Let's begin our next round and I'm going to start a slip knot and this is how I start my projects because I've always get concerned things are gonna fall out. So it's just my own personal preference. If you have a better way of course you're more than welcome to use it. What I want to do at this particular point is that I want to insert to any one of the of the the single or the double crochet. So any stitch at all just insert into the hook. Grab the stra uh, straggler and the string leading to the yarn ball. Pull it through uh, that uh, double crochet and through that loop. And that'll trap that straggler into position just like this. So what I would do for myself is that I just use both strings to pull it through. We need to chain four. So let's uh, chain four. So I use the first one. So I go one and then I just don't worry about that one anymore. Two, three and four and I want to come down and I want to go into the very next stitch that's available to me and double crochet. So when I chained four what that was was a double crochet plus a chain one. So every time you finish a double crochet chain one. Okay and now let's come over here. This is even though it looks like it's far apart it's gonna pull together. So you just gotta just keep going around and you will have a total of 16 of these posts when you go all the way around. So make sure you chain one before doing the next one. So you're double crocheting into each stitch around with followed by a chain one after and please do that all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around and I'm chaining one before I'm doing my last post in there and then before you can just join it to the next one you have to chain one first and then just join to the third chain up. Don't join all the way to the top because you're gonna lose the effect. Just join up to the third one with a slip stitch and fasten off. So fasten off the way that you I've already showed you. You should have a total count now of 16 of these posts going all the way around. So make sure you have that before proceeding and I'll join you back sec. So fasten this yarn off and get your next color ready. Okay so let's grab our next color. I started a slip knot already and what I want to do is that I wanna take this and I haven't trimmed off my yarns. So I'm just gonna leave it there for now and I'm going to start off with the chain one space. So just go into any one of the chain one spaces. Doesn't matter. I have this thing that I like to start my rounds in a different location each and every time so that you don't end up with a line of slip stitching that you can see. So that's just my own personal preference. So I'm gonna insert it into any one of the chain one spaces and then just fasten on. So just take both strands coming around through the loop like so and I'm gonna let that straggler fall down and I want to chain one to start and we're going to put in two um, single crochets into the same space. Okay and just into the right into the same space just two single crochets. So one and two and then what I want to do then for the repeat pattern is that I want to come into the next double crochet and I want to put in uh, a single crochet into that space or into that stitch. So here's the repeat pattern is that basically this um, chain one space is gonna always have two single crochets and then the next double crochet will be a single crochet. So again one more time is that the chain one space will have two single crochets and then a single crochet in the double crochet. Please do that same thing all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around. I still have one more chain one space and I'm just putting my two single crochets in. Now we started off in a chain space so that means I only have one single crochet left in the final double crochet before attaching it to the very first a single crochet like so. Let's uh, fasten off this purple and when we come back we're gonna start on to the next round. In round number four this is the only motif of the entire Stitchcation collection where you have to turn a motif backwards in order to get the effect. So you see how the leaves are kind of popping upward just like this. If you crochet this in the front side that we have been doing what's gonna happen is that it's gonna cause a sinking in like you see here in the back. Okay so we want the leaves to come forward and pop out forward. So in order to do that on the project that we've been working on we need to turn it to the wrong side like so and then begin then begin the stitch work. After we're done this row we're gonna turn it back and finish it all uh, basically on the right side. So with the round number four let's turn our work around and start off on the back. Okay so now that my work is turned backwards I'm going to start off with a slip knot using my green. You can use any colors by the way. It's up to you. So we're just gonna attach it to any one of the single crochets. It doesn't matter which one. Just go into any one that you choose. So just right into one of the stitches and let's join on our yarn. 
and do it the same way that I've been explaining. So just through and through. So we're going to do a beginning cluster and it's different from a regular cluster because the beginning, beginning um, is basically the starting point. So we're going to chain up four first. So one, two, three, four and this is, this is a treble cluster and this is a beginning treble cluster. So we're gonna wrap twice into the same stitch coming in. Now the straggler down here just leave it down there and just trap it underneath into the stitch work and just pull like this. Now that you change your, now that you chain four, we want to wrap twice. We're gonna do a treble cluster. So we'll wrap twice and come into the same stitch and use this straggler down on the base there to trap it underneath there and then pull through. Pull through two and two and hold. Do not finish that stitch please. And so we wanna wrap again twice into the same stitch, pull through, pull through two and two and hold and see how we're collecting stitches. We need a total of four of these. So we're going to wrap again and into the same stitch, pull through two and two and hold. So now you have four, you're going to yarn over and pull through all four to, uh, be, uh, to make your beginning cluster look like this. Once your beginning cluster is done, you want to chain four. One, two, three and four. There's always going to be a chaining of four separating each one of these petals that you see. So coming back down we want you to skip over two stitches, skip two and go to the third and let's begin a regular treble cluster. So we're gonna wrap twice and into the next uh, skip over two, go to the third and pull through, pull through two and two and hold. Okay and wrap again and you wanna do this with a total of four times. And so I just don't, I kinda keep count but I don't but what I'm primarily looking for is that except for the beginning cluster all the other clusters should have five loops on the hook by the time that you have your four posts done in there and how that is is that the four posts count as one of four and then the starting one is your fifth. So once you have that done pull through all of them okay and then chain four. One, two, three and four. So okay, let's do this one more time. So just skip over two, go to the third, so wrap and wrap. Go to the third, pull through two and two and hold. Wrap and wrap, two and two and hold. Wrap and wrap, two and two and hold. And wrap and wrap, two and two and hold. Okay, so I have my five loops back on my hook again. Yarn over, pull through all five and then chain four. One, two, three and four. So because we've done it, all of our stitch counts properly at this point, you're gonna wanna continue the same patterning all the way around and you should end up with perfect and you will end up with 16 of these particular leaves going all the way around. Please do so and I'll meet you back up in the beginning. When you get all the way back around, I'm just finalizing my last one. Chain four first, two, three, four and then uh, join with the top of the beginning where this is actually the, everything coming together at the top. Just attach right there okay, with the slip stitch and please then fasten off and then we're gonna start the next color. We only have two more rounds to go and then uh, we're gonna carry on from that point. So now that you finish this round, it looks like that there's be indentations going away from you that you're looking at the back side. Let's turn it around then and get back to the front side to what we started with when we were doing all of this. So let's get our next color up and the next color is really really quite simple. Let's start off with a slip knot and we're going to then just insert to any chain four space. It doesn't matter which one. You should also make a note that you should actually count 16 of these petals going all the way around before you continue. If you do not have 16 you're not gonna end up with an octagon so you're not gonna be able to, to be able to attach this anywhere within your project. So let's just go into any of the chain four space. Let's attach on as normal. Well the way that I like to do it and then I'm just going to use both stragglers and just chain up three. So one and then two and three and I wanna put four more double crochets into that same space. So one, two, three and four. So with the chaining of three that we started off with that means that there's five double crochets in here. Immediately you're not gonna put any um, any um, chains at this point. We just want to just put five double crochets into each one of the spaces going each are going all the way around. So just five double crochets into each of the chain four spaces. So it's four and five. Please do that all the way around and then we're gonna fasten off and then it's the final round is next. 
So once you have all your spaces in just simply just join in the top of the beginning chain three and fasten off and we're gonna get ready for the final round. We got some notes about that before we continue and let's do that next. So let's review the final round. In the final round what I strongly recommend in the stitchcation is that you do all of your rounds all the way up until the very last one first and then what you want to do is then come back to your motifs all of them for the entire afghan and do the final round all uh, at the same time. The reason for that is that if you want to really play around with your ideas and designs and because there's six different large motifs you may want to just strategically place them because you might want to do all different colors. So what's gonna happen is that the final round is going to make it into an octagon just like so. So the octagons are going to attach just like this so that the flat sides are facing each other and there's two connecting points right here. Now what's gonna happen is that these two are gonna connect here and then we have what we call a mini connector and the mini connector is looks like this and so what's gonna happen is that it's going to connect right into the top right into the corner here and into a midway point here and then to the next point here. And we'll have pictures on this on Stitchcation. So what I'm saying to you is that when you're doing the large motifs when they're attaching to other motifs they're only gonna be attaching to the two corners just like so and but when you're doing the connectors not only are they gonna do to the to the corners but they're also gonna be one right into the center just like so and these connectors are only in two spots like this. So basically we have it like this. Okay, so hopefully that makes any sense and you'll see photos of this available on our Stitchcation as well to get a better sense of the idea. So if you're ready for the final round let's stay tuned and let's get that done. When you're ready for the final round we're going to start off in between two groups of five. So see that there's a group of five there and a group thing. We're gonna go right into the space there that's not really a stitch it's just a space and then we're going to start off by making the first um, uh, corner just like so and then we're gonna carry on. So it works out that the stitch work is perfect in the amounts of counts that you can, can clearly see. So basically every two of the red you're gonna end up with the, another corner and, and so on. So let's uh, begin to do that next and we're going to start off with a slip knot like so and let's grab up our project. So any which one you want as long as it's in the, in the space. Let's go in and then just wrap the yarn around and join. and we want to chain five to begin and I'm gonna take the straggler too and just pull it through. So one, okay, and two, three, four, and five. And what this is, it's one treble plus a chain. That's what that equals. So we're gonna treble back into that same space. So just wrap the hook twice and treble completely and then chain one again and just go back and treble one more time. So each one of the corners has three trebles with the chain one in between just like this. So we're gonna work ourselves along and basically right over here is the next corner. So we've got two uh, red space, uh, places to go before we do the next corner. So we need to get smaller with our stitches. So the first two are going to be one double crochet each. Okay, the next one is gonna be a half double crochet. So just one half double crochet only. And then the next three are going to be single crochets. So one, two, and three. So we've already passed the midway point between this corner and this corner that we're coming up to. So the next one is a half double so we're gonna get bigger again and then the next two final ones are a double crochet each and we're ready for another corner. So what I want to do we want to come right into the space and so we're gonna wrap twice. We're gonna do one treble and chain one. So here's what I want to do is that I wanna grab the other one and get it ready for me because we're, we've decided that we're going to join and I'm gonna join it right right here so that it's basically done and over with. So I'm gonna treble one more time in. So this is the middle of the three trebles and what I want to do is that at this point I want to just drop my hook over here and I want to go into the adjacent one that I want to adjoin. So looking at them both from the top point of view and coming down into the middle one of the three that you see here in, and pull that yarn through just like so and so now that's going to join and then I want to chain one so it locks it and then do the final treble into this one that I've been working with. So with the large motifs I would attach them to the large motifs only and then the small connectors that we have here I would do the connectors later and then you can just attach it at all the appropriate spots. 
So let's carry on. We're going to then get more smaller again. We're gonna work now from this corner to this corner and this corner will be a join again. So that we're gonna start off with two double crochets in a row. So one and two. So one into each. A half double into the next. So you've already known this. The next three are going to be a single crochet each. Okay and then we're gonna get bigger again. So it's a half double. And the next two are one double crochet each. Okay so let's do our next corner. So we're gonna wrap twice to do our first treble. Chain one, wrap twice, do the next treble. And this time once you're at the top, drop the hook, come back to the other side, making sure that it's the same. They're both facing up and it's the right corner that you want to go into. So you wanna come into the top of this one of the middle one on the other side. Pull that through. Chain one to lock it. Okay and then come back and do the next treble which is your final treble for the corner. So at this point these two are now officially connected to each other and you just carry on the same uh, instruction going all the way around. So to do that you're just gonna start again. So the next two are going to be one double each. Okay, a half double into the next. Okay, the next three are singles. We're gonna get bigger again, so the next one is a half. And then two doubles are going to finish this off. And we're back into that space again. So to do the regular corner without attaching is just one treble, chain one. Okay, another treble. And this is where we attached it if we were going to. So if you have another one you want to attach to at the same time this is where you're gonna do it. Attach it if you must. If not just chain one and then treble again into the same one. Okay so when you're doing these for the very first time one of these has to be completely done in order to do the attaching but once you get the first one done all the rest come in line. So just again you just start up again just one double sorry two doubles in a row. A half Okay, two, uh, three singles in a row. Okay and then we're gonna get bigger again. So it's a half and two doubles next. And then the next corner again it's a treble, chain one, treble, chain one and treble. So continue to do that all the way around. So I'm coming all the way back around to where I started and I want to just put in my th three singles just like I had been doing all along just to kind of finish that, finalize it off. The next one is a half and then the final two are just one double crochet each. And then all we're just going to do then at this point is just join it to the very top of the beginning uh, treble but not to the very top. We should chain to the top uh, to the fourth one up just like so. Okay and then basically you want to fasten off and now you're ready to, then to attach it to everything else that you have. So you can move on to the next motif for stitchcation and then at this point what you can see is that you have two that are attached but if you're ever just doing one by itself then basically you can this is how you finish off one if you are needing it to not be attached to anything. Till next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. We'll see you. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to learn another motif and this is for stitchcation. And again this is an octagon and the octagons match the rest of the this, um, the motifs that are in the afghan. You will notice that there are six different types of large motifs just like so and then you're going to notice that there's a connector motif that joins them together. What's going to happen in this tutorial is that I'm going to show you how to do this completely from start to finish but I'd recommend to you is that wait for the final round before the entire afghan motifs are done. So don't do any of the final round on the final motifs uh, when you're going to just leave those out and then what you can just do is position it on a table or a floor and then do the final uh, uh, rows because you need to attach these to a neighbor when you go around. I also recommend uh, 
the outsides are the exact same identical on all of the six large ones. The only difference between them is where they're positioned because the stitches are all slightly different going through it the entire project. So at the end of this uh, video what I'm gonna show you is that I'm gonna show you how to do it normally just in case you don't need to attach a certain edge just like this and then I'm gonna also be teaching you what to do in order to attach it as you go so that you don't need to do a, a stitch uh, you don't need to use a sewing needle in order to put things together. Why not do it as you go and speed yourself up? So you'll notice that the gapping space is right down in here. You'll notice that that is where the small connector goes and so each one of these octagons attach to each other in the horizontal and the vertical so directly straight across so there's no uh, ones right in the center. There's no large motifs right in the center because they won't fit. So let's uh, begin to do this and let's grab up our yarn and talk a little bit more about that now. If you prefer the written instructions they're available on my website and there's a link in the more information of this video to access this particular one and basically it's quite easy and we're using Bernat Super Value to uh, achieve all of this and a six millimeter size a J crochet hook in order to begin. So this one's actually kind of easy because what I've done with this one is that all up until the purple round just like so is that we're using the same color for two rounds in a row so you don't have to change as many colors as you go. Again the color changing is up to you and we of course leave that creativity up to you as well in order to play around with these ideas. So let's begin. I'm going to be matching the same colors that you saw in the intro and uh, it's two different uh, motifs if, you, if you're interested but just to keep it consistent. So I want to uh, create a magic circle to begin and all of the large motifs including the small one are done with the, the uh, magic circle effect. So you're just gonna put the yarn in front of your hand just like this and then just make a point with two fang fingers and then just wrap around and when you come back up over the top, okay, just go over on a diagonal like this. I can't get my hands around too much in order for the camera needs to be in a different point of view. So what I want you to do is just slip your hook in between your fingers like this. Grab this yarn, pull through and before letting it go again just slide it underneath the other one, the stitch or that strand right there and pull through to lock it. And then you can just safely just grab it like this. Remember there's other tutorials available online if you wish to um, learn a more slower techniques and this is a magic circle. So let's begin and we're going to be using everything within the ring and let's begin to do that next. So let's begin. We're going to play with the magic ring and what we need to do is that when we go to play with this ring we need to make sure that these two strings are always on uh, underneath the stitches. So don't ever just drop one of these and just start going around the one strand. You need to go around both and you can obviously just adjust it as you go. So let's uh, begin to do uh, round number one and we're going to start off by chaining one and one single crochet into the center of the ring. Again making sure that these two strands come are underneath it. And what we want to do then is that we need to do some chain work. So let's begin. We're going to chain three, one, two and three back into the center of the ring for another single crochet. If I could just grab that like so and then the repeat pattern on this is chaining three, one, two, three single crochet back into the center of the ring. So that's all you have to do for this. You need a total of eight uh, going all the way around. So just count the gap spaces. So one, two, you got two done already. So one, two and three back into the center. Now if this is start, you're starting to run out of this string here just shift everything. Okay. Don't pull that, don't pull this string yet. Just kind of shift things down and condense it if you need to. So remember single crochet in followed by a chain three and you want to do that a total of eight times so that you have those eight gaps to play with as you're going all the way around. So I'll be back in just a moment and I'll have that done. So I'm coming up all the way back around and I've actually almost finished and what I want to show you is that you need to have a total of, of eight of these gapping spaces or the chain three and so you've got to remember that on the very final one is that you have to attach it to the very beginning. So what we have to do is that once you get that last chain three in you just attach it to the beginning single crochet that you started with. And so what I want you to do before pulling anything tight just verify that you do have your seven or your eight gaps. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and this is your eighth and then once you have that established pull that short string and everything will become compressed right in the middle just like this. Okay so this is what it looks like right now and we can cut that string later. Pull it firmly. Don't over uh, snug it but just pull it firmly and let's get ready for round number two. 
Okay, using the same color what I want you to do is that we need to slip stitch to the second one of the of the middle chaining three here. So let's uh, begin. We're just going to go into the um, next chain that's available to you and slip stitch and then go into the next one when this is the middle one of the of the three and slip stitch and then we're going to begin from here. So don't start your work beginning where you were. You need to be on the top of the center uh, piece just like so. If you look at the original that we had uh, when we were doing this do you see this? So basically what's happening is that these are, are popping out and if you start in the middle of where they're joining then what happens it will be out of alignment. So let's uh, begin to do the next uh, phase here and once you have done that you've got a chain four. So this time it's chaining four, last time it was chaining three. One, two, three, four and then coming back into the next chain three space. So just jump all the way to the next one just single crochet. So the repeat pattern on this one is chaining four, one, two, three, four, and then coming into the next chaining space to single crochet. So one, two, three, four, and next chaining, chain three space and continue to do that all the way around. I'll meet you back at the end and you can start seeing that this is starting to come together. Once you get all the way back around you're going to then uh, slip stitch to the, the first single crochet that you started with just like so and we need to fasten this off at this point. I'm gonna show you how to fasten off only one time in this video and here it's gonna come right now just to be able to hide in your ends. Before you do so though you wanna make sure that you do have your eight. So one, two and I'm counting gap spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight and now I'm just going to grab my scissors and trim my yarn which I just did and then I'm gonna just yarn over and pull through and what I wanna do is that I wanna weave in this yarn tail into this next chain space right here. When you go to attach your next yarn it'll be in the chain spaces or in the chain itself and therefore it'll be almost impossible to see this so that it gets really well hidden at the end. Make sure that you do go beyond the middle of the chaining uh, four space uh, because what's happening is that when you go to attach the next you're gonna attach right in the middle. So if you go a little bit beyond it's gonna trap it into that position. Once you have that done just uh, turn it around and just trim off your starting yarn and the other yarn and you're ready to go for your next one just like so. So here's what it looks like so far. Let's begin our next round and we're gonna start off with the slip knot and this is how I chain or start stuff. So what I wanna do is I wanna come in right into a chain four space. I like to start anywhere, it doesn't really matter. I like to mix it up a bit, it's up to you. So just go into a chain four space and just grab the yarn and just pull it through and then using the straggler and the yarn leading to the ball just pull it through and that'll lock it into position. So now what I want to do is just I want to single crochet into the same space and I'm trapping this straggler underneath just like so. So now what we have to do is that we have to keep jumping to the next chain four spaces all the way around. This time we have to chain five. So one, two, three, four and five and then coming into the next chain three space just or chain four space you just single crochet just like that. So one, two, three, four, five coming into the next chain four space single crochet and keep doing that all the way around and then single crochet in. Okay, I'll meet you back in just a moment. So a few seconds ago I left you as I went all the way around and what I wanted to do is count the gap spaces. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I still have one more to go. So one, two, three, four and five and then just uh, slip stitch to the beginning single crochet that we started out with just like so. So we're gonna keep this color going on and what we want to do is move up to the next round. So like before we need to start in the next round but we need to start at the top of here. So if I start right where I am I'm going to be in the middle section so I wanna move myself up. So I wanna move three uh, chain spaces over as a slip stitch. So just go into the next chain, pull through and through and go to the third one. And that'll take you right to the middle. So what we're going to do then at this point is chain one and then single crochet into that chain five space and then this time we're going to chain six. So one, two, three, four, five and six coming into the next chain five space single crochet. So this one one, two, three, four, five next one single crochet. Please do that all the way around. 
I'm coming up all the way back around and I'm chaining six, one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then single crochet, or sorry, a slip stitch into the first single crochet. So that uh, verifies that. Again, count your gap spaces. Make sure there is eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I want you to fasten off now. I've showed you how to do that. Fasten off and we're gonna get ready for our next color. Okay, let's begin our next color. Start off with a slip knot. Again, my preferred method of joining. So what we have here is that I want you to start off in a chain three space. Okay, and I want, so let's begin. I'm just gonna start off with a slip knot. Just start, this is my preferred method of joining. And what I want to do is that I wanna look at this project and I wanna look at the round below. So this time what we want to do is that we wanna play in the single crochets as well as the chain six gap just like this. So what I want you to do is stick your hook into any one of the single crochets that are around there and then just put it over and join. Okay and I want you to chain one and single crochet back into that first single crochet that you joined to. So this round what we're going to do is that we're going to chain three. One, two, three. Come into the chain six gap and single crochet just into the gap and then one, two, three for chain and then come into the next single crochet. Okay, so the repeat pattern is chaining three, one, two, three, come into the next gap space and then one, two, three, come into the next single crochet. Okay, do that all the way around. See you back here in just a moment. And now coming up all the way back around, obviously I still have a chain three. Okay, get into the get last gap space and then final is chain three, one, two, three, and then slip stitch to the first single crochet that we started with. Please keep on this color. We're going to move up to the next round. Next, Let's move on to our next row. We're simply just gonna come into this chain three space, the next one, and slip stitch so that we're there. So we don't wanna start off right on top of the single crochet. We wanna move over one. We now wanna chain three, one, two, three. This counts as a double crochet and I wanna double crochet four more times into this same chain three space. So basically every chain three space going all the way around will have five double crochets into it. So remember the rules of crochet. The first one counts as a double crochet so then you have four more to make it five. Once you have those five done, simply just jump right to the next chain three space and begin again and make another five into the next one. And please do that into every chain three space going all the way around so that there's no um, chains or anything in between any of these um, double crochets that you're working with. You just gotta keep them in groups of five. Please do that all the way around. So let's begin our next round. The next round we have to start off in the chain three space here. So that means we have to move over. So we're just gonna insert into the next one and just slip stitch over to the chain three space. We now want to double crochet th our chain three. So one, two, three getting ahead of myself here. This counts as a double crochet and we need to double crochet three more times into the same space. So that will, in the rules of crochet, that chaining of three counts as a double crochet. So that means that you have four double crochets into this chain uh, space here. So what we need to do as we're going all the way around is that we are just simply just going to um, double crochet four times into each one of the chain three spaces that you run into. Did you notice I did not chain or put any gaps in between these groups? Okay, they are simply just jumping right over. So once you get four done in this one, simply just jump into the next one and put another four. Please do that all the way around. When you get all the way back around, you're just simply just gonna slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain three that we started with and then fasten that off and I've already shown you how to do that. So we only have two more rounds. The next round is um, pretty straightforward and then the final round is the joining and then we'll talk a little bit more about joining at that point. So let's begin the next round and we're simply going to join on the lavender. So let's begin and slip knot on. So what I want you to look at is that it doesn't matter which one you grab onto, there's gonna be groups of four. Okay, do you see that? So you just have to pick and start at one of the, of the groups. Okay, so just join on like so. And just like how I kinda showed you before. I then want you to chain two one and two and this counts as a half double crochet from here on in. So just put the straggler down on top and I want you to half double crochet into each one of the, the four that you see or the three, the next three that you see. There's a total of four per 
group. So we're just starting off. That's why I'm kind of confused. And what we want to do is that when you have that done is that chain two and then begin again. So we're just going to half double crochet into the next three. So one, two, and three. And then chain two. So one and two and then jump to the next group of four and half double crochet into each one of those four that you see. Okay, so the first chaining of two that we started with in this uh, uh, round counts as a half double crochet already. So, okay, so once you get that four done, chain two, go and jump to the next one, the next four. Okay, so please do that all the way around. When you get all the way back around, make sure that you do chain your two before joining it to the top of the beginning chain two that you started with. Please fasten this color off and then we're gonna move on to the next round which is the joining round. The next part of this video we're gonna talk about doing the joining round and so I have finished one off completely just so that we had a photograph of it but in actual fact I should have actually attached it to its neighbor on the final round as we went along. Now you will notice in the in the instructions of this is that each one of these motifs attach to each other in two spots. So one and two so the large motifs will always attach here and then the next one will attach over here and then you have a space right in here which is for the small connecting one just like this. Now do you see how there's kind of a, a right in the center piece right here there's one that's standing by itself. You can never attach anything like that when you're doing these uh, large motifs. So all of the ones that are in the center that are joining with these small connectors are done when you're doing this round. So what we're doing we're concentrating when we're doing the large motifs is that we're doing all of the attaching of the large motifs first before doing any of the connector spaces. We're gonna fill those in after all of the uh, ones are all connected. So what we're going to do today is that I'm gonna show you how to start off and we're gonna do it regular just like this. You will notice that there's no connectors on the outside of this afghan so that these connectors are only on the interior so you will have sides that are not that look like this and then the other sides then will be joining. So what we have here is an example of another one. See how they're just joining just like this and so then the next two will join just straight down from each other leaving that pocket right in the center. So let's uh, begin to do the final round now. So let's grab on our yarn and make a slip knot. So I'm gonna show you how to start these and carry it along as if it's not joining and then I'm gonna show you the join. So you can just choose any one of these chain two spaces it doesn't matter where. So this is my lucky one right here. So let's uh, begin and we are just going to just join on and begin to do a chaining of five. So the chaining of five is actually a treble and the treble it has then um, a chain one at the top. So let's begin to chain four, one, two, three, four and then we add another chain which is your chain five which counts as a treble plus one chain. So hopefully that makes sense to you. So then we're going to treble again into the same space. So wrap and wrap into the same space and finish that one completely and then chain one and then wrap and wrap. So each one of the corners has a total of three trebles with the chain one right in the right in between those two okay. So there's one here and one here. So let's begin and we're going to start getting smaller and it's just like the other motifs is that we're gonna get smaller to the middle point and then uh, reach out and get bigger again. So the next two are going to be a double crochet each. So one and two Okay, the next one is a half double. Okay, so half double and then the next three are one sing are single crochet each. So this is one, the gap is one and the next one is one. Okay, so one and then into the gap for two and then the next one for three. So now we're gonna get bigger again. So the next one is a half double and then the next two, the final two before the next corner is a double crochet each. And now we're ready for another corner. So we wrap and wrap going in okay and get your treble in chain one another treble. This is the middle one of the three chain one and then another treble. So I'm going to show you again coming across. So we're gonna start off and put two doubles in a row the next one is a half. Okay, and the next three are singles. So the first one is into a stitch, the second one's into a gap, next one's into a stitch. So that's your three. And then we're gonna get bigger again and doing a half double. 
and a double, uh, two doubles next. So let's begin and I'm gonna show you how to join this next part. So we're gonna wrap and wrap and do our first treble. Chain one, wrap and wrap, next double or treble and we'll come all the way back to the top and finish it. So what we need to do is grab our example that we have that we're attaching to and I'm just gonna continue to attach it to something I already have going on and I need to attach it straight down from each other. Okay, so right at the bottom pieces right here and here. So I'm not gonna worry about this. The one in the center is the connector motif which we haven't got to that far yet. So what we want to do is that we're going to attach one motif right straight down and the next one is straight down over here it's leaving this gap. So what we have to just do is that we remove the hook, okay, keeping that loop and we come to the next one available to us and what we want to do is that in the middle one of that treble is we insert our hook down from the front side in, pull this loop through and chain one to lock it and now it's joined and then we treble as normal. Okay, so we locked it within that chain one and now it's permanently attached and so that is the last treble going in and so we come along, we do our two doubles in a row, or that was a half, we do our two doubles in a row okay and then we follow through with a half double and then the three singles, so the first one's in a stitch, the next one's in a gap, next one's in a stitch and then half double as we get bigger and then two doubles to finish before we start the next one. So the next corner we still have to attach it to that same motif. So we begin the first treble, well that wasn't a treble so wrap and wrap for a treble, chain one, okay we do another treble and finish it and then leave the, the loop. So we come back to the same motif, just be very careful you are getting the right one and then just coming into the middle one of that treble straight down in to the stitch, pull the loop through, chain one to lock it and then just finish the corner with another treble. So wrap and wrap and finish it. So you can continue to go all the way around. There's nothing more to attach to for me. At this point I have one straight up but obviously I'm missing one right in the middle. So you can see that these two are now permanently attached to each other just like this. So what I want you to do is carry on going all the way around using the same thing. If you have more motifs that need to be attached you can do so and if not you just carry on as normal as what you see. When you get all the way back around you just need to join to the fourth chain up. Don't join to the fifth uh, because you need to maintain that chain one gap in there and then just simply fasten off and weave in your ends. So what I'd recommend to you is get all your motifs done and then do the final round when you're ready to attach all of the motifs together. So wait to the final round for all of your motifs before moving on. So this is Stitchcation. Join me again. We have more motifs to explore. We have six large ones and then one small connector to bring everything together. Till next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as yarnspirations.com. We'll see ya. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to experience another stitchcation motif and this is a great one. This is from the Tucson Throw and this is an amazing one. There's actually two motifs in the large ones that are from that particular throw and I'll provide a link and more information for this for this particular stitchcation and you can get all of the motifs as well. In today's pattern we're going to be uh, experiencing this one. Again the color choices are up to you. We're using a size 6 millimeter size J crochet hook today. Now in this tutorial we're going to go all the way to what you see. Now you can see that it's not attached to anything. I did this as a photo prop but what's gonna happen at the final round is that you're going to use the final round and attach to a neighbor as you go all the way around just like you see here. Okay, so what I recommend and I've been saying in all the stitchcations is that get all of the motifs done all the way to the second last round and then put them down on a table, lay them all out and then put them uh, where you think they should go and then do the final rounds and attaching it. Now the very first one that you'll ever do always has to be completely done and then they all start building uh, and attaching uh, 
next to each other once you get the first one done. So without further ado let me uh, just grab some yarn and let's get you started and of course the more information of this video has the details to be able to follow along as well. So let's begin today and I'm using lavender. This is part of the Bernat Super Value collection and uh, of course we have more information in Stitchcation about the pattern and etc. So let's uh, create a slip or sorry a magic circle. The magic circles are what all of the Stitchcations are using right in the center. So it's not a chain and they go around the ring. We're gonna do a magic circle. So just put out two fingers. Just grab the, the other yarn right here. Grab two fingers. Wrap and go up and over. And when you go over you just have to crisscross over the top just like this. Then insert the hook in between your kind of open your fingers a little bit. Insert and grab this second string that you see right there. Pull it through and then just with that same strand just go and grab that strand and pull it through to lock it. And now you can just let it go like this and you can see that your ring is ready. Whenever you're crocheting on top of this ring you've gotta make sure both of these strands are underneath the stitches so that you can pull it nice and shut. So let's move along to round number one. In round number one we're going to put eight single crochets into this ring. So let's begin to do that now and we're gonna count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. And before you go any further I want you to join it to the beginning single crochet. So just insert your hook into the very beginning single crochet like so. Yarn over and pull that strand through. This is a slip stitch and then what I want you to do is turn it around. Grab that straggler that's hanging off like this and just pull it and it'll pull the whole center nice into each other just like this. So you can pull it firmly and now you have a center point. We're gonna keep this yarn going for the next uh, rotation. So keep this going and I'll see you in just a sec. Now right now there's eight single crochets in here. So I'm gonna just verify. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. I've got that in and we're going to put in uh, some groups of trebles and there's two groups of trebles for every one stitch. So let's begin. We're going to chain four and that counts as a treble. So one, two, three, four into the very same stitch. Let's do a treble. So we're gonna wrap the hook twice going into the same stitch and then pull through two, two and two. So after you have your trebles in like this you're now gonna chain two, one and two and then we go and put in two more trebles into the very next one. So wrap twice into the next stitch available to you. Do a treble and do another one. So we're gonna put two in there. So they're not like a cluster, they're on their own. And then once you have your two in, chain two and then start again to the next one. Please do that all the way around. You should have a total of eight groups of two trebles by the time you get all the way back around and I'll see you there in just a moment. As I promised you a moment ago there should be eight groups of these two. Remember the final group is in and then you have to chain two before joining it to the top of the chain four that you started with. So what I want you to do at this point is that I want you to fasten this off. I'm only gonna show it one time in this video and this is it. So grab your uh, scissors, trim your yarn and I want you to yarn over and pull through like that and I want you to weave in that straggler into your stitch work. So just in and out of the, the rows go about two inches in. If you do this now it saves you at the end of this to be able to have to find a way to bury in your yarn. It's so much easier to do it as you go than it is to wait at the end and then you have to pull a darning needle out and really have to upset yourself. <laughs> so I'm going to finish that off right there. I'm, I'm happy with that. See how this is open back up. I'm just going to pull it again. Okay and I want it just kind of nice like that. So I'm gonna trim both of the strands now. This one I can safely cut. Okay so I don't ever have to worry about that again and then I'm just gonna cut the straggler that's in the back. This is the pull string. Okay and so now I'm ready for the next round. I'm gonna grab my aqua next. So let's uh, join on some new yarn. I always join it on with a slip knot. It just is a satisfaction thing for me. It makes it easier. So what I want to do is that I wanna pick any one of the groups of two. So it can be any one. It doesn't matter. You choose and you're gonna choose the one that is on the, the first one that's available to you and you're going to insert into the top of the first one and just pull through and pull through both of the strands and now we're ready to go. So we're, what we're going to do is that we're going to uh, chain one 
and we're going to single crochet into that same spot. Now the way that I've been doing it throughout the stitchcation is that the way that I'm joining is differently. They ask you to change your yarn before moving to the next step. I like the more cleaner look. It just makes sense to me but again that's a completely up to you. So what you wanna do is once you have the first one done you're going to single crochet into the next treble that's available to you and then you're going to put in four single crochets into this chain space. So one, two, three and four and then in the next two trebles you might have to move stuff around in order to get into it is just one single crochet each. Okay, so the next chain space is gonna have four. Okay, and then the next one are two trebles, so just one single crochet each. Continue to do that same patterning all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around. I've got my two singles where the trebles are. I just have this last chain space where there's gonna be four. One, two, three, and four. Remember the colors are just subjective to me but I am gonna fasten off at this time and just uh, slip stitch it to the top of the beginning single crochet. So to the beginning single crochet and fasten that off and I'll see you back here in just a moment. We'll carry on. So let's begin our next color. We're going to start off with a slip knot and this time we're gonna do some V-stitch work and what we're going to do is that we're going to start off, it can be any one as long as it's the first one. Okay, so it can be any one as long as it's the first one. So let's uh, just go in, insert and let's just join like so. And what we want to do is that we want to chain five. So we're gonna have one, two, three, four and five. This counts as a double crochet plus a chain two and you're going to double crochet back into that same stitch. So that's how you get started and then all this round is is basically we're gonna skip two and go to the third one and just double crochet, chain two and double crochet into the same one. That's like a V stitch. Okay, skip two, go to the third, double crochet, chain two, double crochet. Continue to do that same patterning all the way around. And once you get all the way back around just slip stitch to the third chain of the of the five that you started with. You should have a total count of 16 of these V stitches going all the way around. Please fasten off and we're gonna get ready for another color. We only have two more rounds to go. Let's begin our next round and we're gonna start off with a slip knot to attach and I want to attach this to any of the chain two spaces. So any of the chain two, so right in the middle. So see how these two are coming together. There's no space there but there is there. So just choose any one, doesn't matter and just wrap their yarn around and join. And what I want you to do now is chain six. So we have one and two, three, four, five and six. This time it counts as a double crochet plus chaining of three. So now what I want you to do is just double crochet into the same chain two space. Well, that's kind of loose on the way I just did it. I'm gonna try again. There was absolutely no tension in my hands so I'm just restarting that. And basically there is what it looked like. So basically I'm just going to jump to the next chain two space. So just jump over and basically we're just matching the V stitches but this time the V stitch is slightly bigger. So it's a double crochet, chaining three and double crochet into the same chain two space. So the V stitch is just getting a little bit bigger with the, the rotation that's going around. So please do that in every one of the V stitches uh, double crochet, chain three, double crochet and I'll see you back here in just a moment. When you come up all the way back around you're just going to slip stitch to the chain three. So there's actually chain six here. Just go to the third one only to maintain that stitch count there. Please fasten that off and you should have a total count of 16 of these because you had 16 of the green. These just went right inside the green so therefore there should only be 16 of these in this rouge color. So let's begin the next round. So let's begin our second last round and we're going to join on with the blue. And we're going to join on to any of the chain three spaces that are in the middle of a V stitch. Doesn't matter which one you choose. So we're going to just attach and I want you to chain four this time. So one, two, three and four and this time I want you to put in three or two more trebles in this particular uh, stitch in this space here. Okay, so two more. 
So how this one is working is that this is considered in the middle of an octagon uh, flat space but it will make sense in just a moment. So what we're going to do is once you have your three done you're going to chain one and now the next one is your first octagon corner. So how we do it is that we're going to treble into the next one, next B stitch, chain one, we're going to treble again. Okay, that's the middle one of the of the corner. Chain one and treble again. And then after you have this corner done, chain one. Okay, so the corner is basically our trebles with chain ones in, in between and the ones in the flat space are just trebles by themselves. Let's review this one more time. So the next one is going to be th uh, three trebles into the same stitch. Into the, okay, to the next V stitch. Like so. Once you have those three done, chain one and now the next one is your next corner. So you're gonna start off with the treble followed by a chain one. You're going to do another treble. This is the middle one of the three followed by a chain one and then treble into the, into the same one. And then after you have that done, chain one and begin another flat side. So it's three trebles into the same one. Okay, so continue to do that same patterning all the way around when we're gonna finish this off and then we'll review on how to do the final um, edging after that, the final border. When you come up all the way back around you're going to be doing a corner piece here because we started in the middle and there's a corner right here. We'll just make sure you chain one first and then just slip stitch it to the top of the beginning um, treble that you started with. So the chain four. Okay and fasten that off and we're gonna review how the next one which is your um, border which joins to your neighbors. Okay we're now ready to do the border and basically this is what you will look like right now. Now in stitchcation I recommend that all of the motifs, all six designs in the large as well as the small connectors are all done up until the second last line or second last row. And the reason for it is that the last row has to physically connect with the neighbor. Now for tutorial reasons I did this as a sample so you could see what it looks like but in actual fact it should already be attached to a neighbor by the time it gets to this point. And so you can actually um, do this and I'm gonna show you ways in order to uh, make this uh, but not all of the, the sides actually attach to each other. Sometimes that this could actually be on the outside of the afghan so therefore you will have like this whole section right here completely on the outside so it's not attaching to anything. Now when we go to attach the big large motifs together they are only attached to a neighbor in two spots. Okay, so here's a, a great example right here. And so you can see the two sides are coming together right there. Okay, and so then the next ones are straight down from each other just right there. Okay, and you can see that there's a hole in the middle right in here and that's for the small connectors that we do at the very end of stitchcation that you see here and then that ties everything together. So basically you have to attach as you go when you're doing this. So one of these has to be completely done to be your starting point and then etc. So what I recommend is that you lay these down on a table. You, you, if you have different colors and ideas you can just kind of you know move them around, shift them around. Once you're satisfied then you can start the, the outside edge. Now the way stitchcation has been designed that each one of the six large motifs have the exact same finishing on the outside round. The only difference is where they appear uh, of the stitches is slightly different because each one has a different second last round. So you have to really kind of just play with your ideas. If you want all of the, the outside motifs to have the same color you're more than welcome to do so. Again but you can have a lot of creativity uh, for yourself as well. So without further ado I'm gonna get you started on here. I'll show you how to do this and then I'll show you how to attach to a neighbor at the same time. So let's begin the final round and I'm gonna show you how to do this. Make sure that you are attaching to a neighbor as you go all the way around or you'll be grabbing a sewing needle and <laughs> putting it together and you won't be happy. So what I want you to do is that you can look for any one, you can follow the instructions as it says but you can look for any of the ones that are in the flat areas. You can tell it's flat because this one has the chain one spaces in between so it kind of opens up. These are kind of together so it can be any one of those and just make sure that you grab the first one that's available to you. So let's uh, just grab our yarn and create a slip knot to join. The outside is really quite easy and once you start doing them that becomes really easy. So this uh, insert into the first one, attach your yarn on and then chain one 
and single crochet into the same uh, position, the same space, same stitch. Okay, so now we're ready. We're going to single crochet into the next two. Okay, so we're, this time we're starting right in the middle of um, doing an outside round so it's a middle flat edge. The next one is going to be a half double crochet. We're gonna get the edge to be bigger to form the point better. And then the next two are going to be um, a double crochet but the next two are kind of confusing. The first one is in the treble so it's a double crochet in the, in the, in the treble. The next one is the chain one space. And I know this is right because the middle one here is where the new fancy stitch work should happen. So just like we did here with the trebles we need to do it once again. So we're going to wrap our hook twice and treble into that middle one. And then we're going to follow it with a chain one and then treble back in. Follow the chain one and then treble back in. So it's basically what you did with the blue already below. So now let's move along and create our first side. In the next corner I'm gonna show you how to join to your neighbor. So the first one is going to be in this chain one space and that's gonna be a double crochet. The next one is a double crochet into the next treble. In the chain one space here is going to be a half double crochet. And on top of these three that are in the middle there's always gonna be three single crochets and we kinda did that over here when we did it and that's the same thing that's gonna happen this time. So it's three single crochets right into, sorry, one into each of the three, just like that. So now let's get bigger again and so in the gap space, the chain one space, we're gonna half double crochet. The next treble we're going to double and then the chain one space we're gonna double again and now we're gonna create a first corner. So I'm gonna start the corner and then I'm gonna show you how to join. So we're gonna start it by doing a treble followed by a chain one and treble once again. So this is the middle treble of the three. This one that I'm just doing right now. We wanna grab our other project that we're working on and when we're attaching it to a neighbor's you could be actually attaching it uh, in different spots and we talk about that in the attaching process. But what I want you to do is that I want you to get the right side up so it's facing up and I want you just to put this back in your hands, take your hook out and keep your loop and go to the other one that's matching it. So the other middle treble on the next one. Insert your hook from the right side down. Pull the loop through. Chain one to lock it and then treble back in. So if you've been working on other stitch cations it's the exact same thing that we've been doing all along. So let's uh, move along to the flat edge and then I'll join it to another one over here. So the next chain one space is a double crochet. The next treble is a double crochet. The next one is a half double crochet as we get smaller and then we're back in the middle section again and they're um, one single crochet into each of the three. So one, two and three. Okay and then we're gonna get bigger again so we're gonna half double crochet. The next one is the treble so it's a double. And the next one is a double in the chain one space and then the trebles start once again for the corner. So we're gonna start the corner with the treble followed by a chain one treble. And this is the middle one of the three. Take out your hook, go back and get the next one that's available to you so it's kind of matching. Okay, this is the treble on this side. Go straight down in, grab the loop, pull it through, lock it with the chain one and then treble once again to finish off that side. And you're just gonna maintain the same patterning going all the way around. There's nothing more to attach in this particular example. So you're just gonna go along. So you're gonna do uh, a double. Okay, so you'll have two doubles in a row. You'll have a half double by itself. And then the next three is in the middle again. So there's three single crochets in a row. Okay, and then you're gonna get bigger again. So it's a half double double on the next, double in the chain one and you're back to doing a corner again. So it's just starting off with a treble followed by a chain one, treble again, chain one and there's nothing to attach so I just keep on going. Okay and then you just go back to going now narrow, narrow down. So continue to do that same patterning all the way around. When you get all the way back around you are just maintaining the pattern as normal and then we're just gonna finish off with a half double crochet in that gap space 
and then we're running into the single crochets that we started with. Just simply just slip stitch to the first single crochet and then fasten off and then the border for that is completely done. So this is what it would look like at this point with them uh, put together without having to pick up a sewing needle. So here we have it done. You can see that they're attached together. They look fabulous and until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarn Inspirations as well as the Crochet Crowd. Thank you so much for joining me for Stitchcation today. We'll see ya. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on Motif C. This is part of the Tucson Afghan that is also part of Stitchcation and this is the mini uh, motifs that connect all of the large ones together. So what we have here is in the Afghan you will have a space that is left in between the large motifs. This particular motif is what fits in there. Now you should know that what happens on here is that this will attach to a section of the actual, it'll be like this. So there, there'll be one straight up. This will attach to two of the large motifs coming together. These two will be along a flat edge of the octagon of the large motifs and then these are the other um, these two here are the ones that are in between. So how it works is basically you have one that is gonna be attaching up here, okay. The middles are here and here, here and here and then you have of course your points. So right where you've attached the other ones right here, these motifs will attach there as well. So you wanna make sure that when you're doing these mini connecting ones right here is that you leave these to the last because these are the ones that reach across the middle when you're going to attach. So if you attach these here and don't attach the, the middle one that you see right here, then it becomes a real problem. So without further ado, let's try to get started on this. This is a really quick one. Um, these are really quite easy and you'll find it's really quite fabulous at the same time. So let's begin. We're using a size 6 millimeter size J crochet hook today using Bernat Super Value for my Stitchcation Afghan. Let's grab our string. We're gonna do a magic circle to begin. So the straggler is gonna fall down in the front, come around and up over my hand like so. Insert your needle in between the kind of the dents of your, of your fingers where they're coming together and come up underneath the first string, grab the second and then just reach around and grab it again like so and therefore you have your ring. So when you go to play in the ring you have to make sure that you're trapping both of these strands together underneath so don't ever just get one because you need to pull everything nice and tight together. So without further ado let's begin the center of the circle. To begin we're gonna start immediately in chain five. One, two, three, four and five and as per the instructions this counts as a double crochet and a chain one or chain two. So double crochet and chain two. So let's just double crochet back into the center of the ring as normal. Okay. And then chain two. So one and two. Back into the center of the ring for a double crochet and then chain two. You want to do that a total so that you have eight of these posts going all the way around. One and two and just continue to go. One and two and double crochet back in one and two, back in, one and two. Now I'm not really counting, I'm, I just always do a whack of them at one time, whack meaning in my slang for a lot. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I only have one more to go, so chain two. Get the last post in there so you have a total of eight. And then in order to reach across to here you have to chain two first. So it stays consistent and go to the third chain up of the chain of the beginning chain five to fasten it off with this uh, uh, a slip stitch. So now what you want to do is this straggler that's here. This is part of your magic ring. Pull that now, and it will bring your tire middle together, just like you see here. So I'm only going to show you how to fasten off once in this video, and here it goes. I'm just going to trim off my yarn. Yes, I just trimmed it. Just yarn over, pull it through, and I want to weave this yarn through the chain work. So I can hide it under to the next round. So this is kind of how I do it for all of it including any other project other than Stitchcation. When it comes to the final edge work um, when you really need to hide, hide in your ends I always grab a darning needle just to finish it off quite nicely. But in this case this works just as well for what we're doing. Once you have it nice and weaved in just turn it over, trim off your ends. Trim off your ends just like so 
and now they're out of your way and you're ready for the next round up as you go. So here's what it looks like so far and you should make sure that you do have a total of eight to begin. Let's begin our next round. We're gonna start off with a slip knot of a new color. Remember all the color changes that I have in Stitchcation or any project for that matter are only ideas. You can always uh, change anything that you wish. So go into any one of the chain two spaces. It doesn't matter which one you get. Just grab into one and just fasten it on to begin. This is the way that I do it so that I can lock in the ends and then what I need to do is that I need to chain six. So we're gonna go one and then two, three, four, five and six. Now this counted this time as a double crochet plus chaining of three and then we're going to double crochet into the same space that we just were in. We're gonna create it's what what's called as a V stitch into each one. So you're not going to do anything other than um, you're not gonna put any uh, spaces in between any of your V stitches. You're just gonna keep it all nice and consistent. So we're just immediately going to jump to the next chain two space, double crochet and then chain three. One, two, three and then come back into the same space for another double crochet. You see that? Then come into the next one next space for a double crochet, chain three and back in to the same space. Okay, next space for a double crochet, chain three and continue to do that all the way around and you should have a total of eight of these V stitches working all the way around. So I'll meet you at the end. When you get all the way back around you're just gonna finish off with the last double crochet. Go to the third chain up in the very beginning on where we started. We did chain six only go to the third one and then just fasten it off with the slip stitch. So fasten that off and we're gonna continue along with the next color. Let's begin our next color. Lavender is up next and we're just gonna create a slip knot to join. And so what we need to do is that you need to look at these V stitches and you gotta look for where two are coming together like so. Okay, so just look wherever two is coming together. That's where you need to go and I want you to look for the one right here. Okay, so if these are two together, look for the one right here. If it's these two, it's the one right here. It's, a, it's the same position. So let's just join it onto there and attach. Okay, and let's chain one. Okay, and then back into the same spot for a single crochet. Okay, so that's what we're going to do for that. So let's uh, begin our repeat pattern going all the way around. You notice how I just instinctively just kind of put that over top. I'm gonna bury that underneath of the stitches. So now I'm going to put four single crochets into this chain three space. So one, two, three and four. And now that you see the next two double crochets that we have here, you're just gonna put it one single crochet into each. So here's the repeat pattern to go all the way around. In the chain three spaces you're always gonna put in four single crochets. So one, two, three and four and then once you have that done these next two double crochets that you run into just one single crochet each. Okay, continue that same patterning going all the way around four single crochets into the chain three space and one single crochet into each of the next two double crochets. Please do that all the way around. When you're coming up all the way back around you've got your four single crochets in the chain three space. Don't forget we still have one double crochet because we joined onto this one over here. So make sure you get that one last single crochet in and then let's please join it to the beginning single crochet. Fasten off and now the next round is the attaching round that's gonna attach everything together. So we're now ready for the connecting round. Now this one I have not connected just for ph uh, photography and tutorial reasons but what's gonna happen is that each of these connectors will attach to another motif. Okay, so what's gonna happen is that it's gonna attach into the points of the octagon, the middle of a flat edge on this side and on this side as well as this side and this side and then where the other two attach at the top. So you cannot actually physically finish this without having the large motifs done. If the, I were you and you were me, I'd recommend that you get all of your motifs done. So complete them all to this level here and then once you have your large motifs and ready to for the joining process, I would then circle around and start to join as you go with the established ideas. So what I have off camera here is that I have an afghan where I've started to do the assembly 
and you can see I've started putting stuff together and you can see now I have a gap right in the middle where that's gonna go. So without further ado I'm gonna show you how to finish and attach these in, uh, in the next part of this tutorial. So let's begin to do the attaching process just like you see there is a total of eight attaching pieces just like so. And right where you see the chain work this is actually not correct this particular sample that you're looking at at screen. I should have actually had chaining of six on the edges but for tutorial reasons I'm just showing you what they look like at this particular point. Now you will notice that you have a chain and then six and then chain and six and chain and six. So that's what you wanna look for when being able to do this round. Now where we're gonna start is the second one of one of these. So if you follow it straight up that's where we're gonna start. So we're not gonna start off in a chain space itself. We're gonna start off just to the one side. Doesn't matter which one you look at it's always gonna be the same. So without further ado let's grab on our yarn and let's do the attaching process. Okay. So we're going to follow my theory of just following that second one straight up. Okay and that's where we're gonna start. And we're just gonna attach and we're gonna chain one and single crochet into this one and five of the next single crochets. So let's do, let's count. So this is one, two, three, four and five. And now we're ready to do the attaching. So how to do the attaching is that we're going to chain three, one, two, three and pinch. Okay, keep that there. We're going to look at your work and we notice that we have to fill in this gap. I want you to start off right here in the middle section, not into where two are coming together and look for the middle single crochet that's available to you. Okay, and it's just the middle one coming straight in from the right side, straight down, pull the loop through and then chain three. So one, two and three and now what we want to do making sure that this is this is accidentally turned around make sure that we get it to the right side so that we're going in the right direction and then coming back into the very next single crochet that's available to you do that one plus five more. So there's gonna be a total of six. Three, four, five and six. And now we're ready for the attaching again of the next part. So one, two, three. So if the last part I just went into a middle section just like this, the next one is where two octagons are actually already fastened together. And we're gonna come straight in where they're, where they're joining together, pull that loop through. Okay, and then chain uh, three. One, two and three coming back down to this little mini motif and get the next six again of single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five and six and we're ready to join again. So one, two, three. Okay, so if we got in between the, the two where the octagons are coming together that means the next one is in a middle section of this octagon and again it's the middle one. I visually can see that and hopefully you will be able to as well. It's the middle single crochet, pull it through and then one, two and three for chain coming back down into the mini motif and going for the next six. One, two, three, four, five and six. Okay, that's ready for another attaching. So one, two, three, pinch. Okay, so if we were in the middle this last time, the next time is the octagons are coming together. And again, it is easier to do this on a table than it is to do it on your lap. So just whatever makes it easier for you. Okay, right where they're attaching, I'm looking to the same spot just to be consistent to pull it through. And then one, two and three. Okay, coming into the next three or six. One, two, three, four, five and six. Okay, let's attach again. So one, two, three. Okay, take it out. This time it's along a flat edge because the last time is where the octagons came together. So looking for the middle single crochet. Coming straight in, pull it through, loop through, chain three, one, two, three. Okay, and get the next six. One, two, 
three, four, five, and six. Ready to attach again. One, two, three, pinch. Okay, we're looking at this again. So if the last time was a flat edge, the next one is where two octagons are coming together straight into the same spot where they're attached. And then one, two, three, coming into the next six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, we're almost done. You can see the green is almost all the way around. We're gonna attach again. So one, two, three. Okay, and then looking for the next flat edge because we were just in between two octagons coming together. Straight in. So one, two, and three. Coming back down into the next six. And two, three, four, five and six. You've run out of stitches but this is the first one that we started off with. We didn't do a join right away so we've got one, two, three. You only have one more join available to you and that is where the two octagons are coming together. So in and then one, two, three and we all we just need to do is come back down in because you're already there and just slip stitch it to the beginning single crochet and then fasten that off nicely. Weave in your tails and then that particular mini motif is then joined. So I'll do that off camera and meet you back in just a moment. And when all is said and done here's what the motif looks like. You can see it's attached right where the two octagons are attached together on all four of them that you see and then of course it's then attached right in the middle of the flat sides of all of the octagons as well. So you have to have all of those octagons done before you can do the middle attaching just like so. Till next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the crochetcrowd.com. Stay tuned for more videos. If you're still sticking with staycation have a great day and we'll talk to you real soon. Bye bye.